person interested in football and soccer, it's highly likely you've seen or heard about Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso, a quirky collegiate American football coach, was first introduced to us a few years ago in a few TV spoofs when NBC secured the broadcast rights to the English Premier League here in the U.S. In 2020, the unassuming, soccer-naive, comedic sketch character came to life in his own hit show. Hello, everyone. This is Rev Brad, and you're listening to the Soccer Chaplains United podcast from the Touchline. As a football chaplain of some 20 years, I thought I would share some lessons from Ted Lasso. Now, just a quick caveat. I've listened to a couple things about Ted Lasso, namely uh, some of the influences and resemblances from John Wooden's coaching philosophy. I know about some of those things, but I've purposely stayed away from listening to too much of the commentary around the show, other than a Brene Brown podcast with show actors and producers Jason Sudeikis and Brendan Hunt. I don't want to over-spiritualize or idolize Ted Lasso, but I do want to offer a chaplain's view into some of the positive pieces from what we see on the screen that I believe are largely missing from the game and sorely, sorely needed. So whether you're an athlete, a coach, a staffer with a beautiful game, I think this series will be fun, creative, and have a little bit of everything for everyone around the game. One other note, I'm recording a bunch of these episodes so that during busy points in the MLS season, there can still be a weekly podcast, even if I can't get a guest or have a particular topic. So if you're listening regularly, when you hear the Ted Lasso theme music at the start of the pod, you can go ahead and skip forward to the two and a half minute mark and skip this intro and our typical podcast theme roll. Thank you for listening to the From the Touchline podcast. Here we go with a lesson from Ted Lasso. Just a little off foot, thinking he's going to go far post. Not strong enough with his right hand. Whips that one in. Far post, almost made him in, and they have. He has the hat trick. The second in his career. The third of the night. The hat trick hero. Talked about you're not going to be able to sustain that kind of pressure. To the corner. Goes towards the near post. And you're the angle, and what a goal! What a goal! One of my favorite scenes in episode one happens in the span of some five to six seconds. Coach Lasso and Coach Beard, Ted's trusty and knowledgeable sidekick, finally get a sit down in the manager's office after a rough first day's introduction to the media and to the team. No sooner do they sit, but they turn around and are shaking their heads. This simply won't do. They get up and next we see them pushing their desks together. The desks had been apart on the other side of the room, their backs to one another. That can't happen. It's truly a moment of solidarity. If we haven't realized by now that Coach Beard and Coach Lasso are in this thing together, no matter how poorly we think the thing has started, well, we will by now. Certainly in football, and especially at the elite levels of the game, there's typically an aura around the manager. He or she is someone special. At the highest levels of the game, they are paid extremely well, and a lot of them may even have an air of arrogance or a mentality and personality that has to deal with and weather the the extreme conditions whereby fans and journalists vacillate between criticism and praise seemingly minute by minute, at least day by day or week by week. Some managers in our modern era have picked up unique nicknames and monikers. Jose Mourinho is known as the special one, or Jurgen Klopp known as the normal one. But this scene in Ted Lasso is powerful as we realize that Coach Lasso is in partnership with Coach Beard. We might say that he sees Coach Beard as an equal, maybe even as greater than himself. As a kid grown up in the 70s, I remember watching The Adventures of the Lone Ranger. This simple black and white show carried me away to the adventuresome Wild West. But even the Lone Ranger wasn't really alone. His faithful Native American companion, Tonto, was usually there to rescue him out of trouble, to fight alongside of him when outmatched by opponents and enemies, to help heal and nurse him back to life when wounded, or to give him wisdom and insight that he didn't have himself. The truth is, we all need a faithful companion in life. We see this in the first pages of Scripture, Genesis 1 and 2. God declares it's not good for the man he's just created to be alone. So God creates woman, a suitable helper, a lifelong companion. And the cool thing is this, is that God kind of saves the best for last. And and woman is the ultimate part of his creation. It's, It's the last part of his creation. 
And our need for friendship and companionship isn't really relegated to just married life alone. I can tell you, my wife and I are getting ready to celebrate some 20 years of marriage this year, but I can definitely say that we've both needed friends outside of our marriage. I've needed guy friends and she's needed girlfriends to help sustain us, encourage us, pray for us, stand with us, to be accountable with, to fellowship with, to spend time with. We've needed those friendships. Proverbs 18, 24 puts it this way. A man of many companions may come to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Elsewhere in the Bible, we see other examples. We see the close relationship of David and Jonathan. We see Jesus and his friendship with John, his disciple, the one that is known as the disciple that Jesus loved. This likely was his best friend. I want to encourage you, take a moment and look around. At the club you're at, if you're a footballer, who's your closest friend? Who is that person who will fight for you, stick by you, someone who would die for you? If you're a manager, I imagine that someone on your coaching staff may be close to you. Maybe you and that person have been through a lot together. Are they a friend who sticks closer than a brother? If you're a staffer, an executive, or an owner, you know, sometimes the more powerful or wealthy or, uh, or the more resources that one has that circle of trustworthy friends becomes smaller and smaller. Maybe it's even non-existent. Whom can you trust? Who accepts you? Who appreciates you for who you are? No strings attached. Well, let me encourage you. We all need a faithful companion in this life and in football. Someone whom we can trust and someone we can push the desk together with, as it were. I pray that you have that person or that you find them soon, no matter where you are or what you're facing. Well, thanks for listening to this lesson from Ted Lasso. This is Reb Brad coming to you from the Touchline.